Mr. Baines' work, gig, learning gig. Learning. I want you to learn something today the easy way. Now, almost every one of you in this room has probably learned something to help. Has probably learned something the hard way. Most of the teachers in this room have learned what we're going to talk about today the hard way. But if we can learn something today the easy way, then let's do that. Now, it, it just happens to be in super psychology, we're discussing learning. Just yesterday, I asked two different students in each class, I said, what exactly is learning? Here it is. I got a psychology textbook. Learning is a behavioral change because of experience. Or potential behavioral change. Now, hopefully, the experience is this room and not someplace else. Let's see what's, what we're going to learn about. Well, I'm going to talk about life. I love life. Life is great. I'm psyched on life. I'm pumped. Talk about people and their friends. Talk about drugs and drinking and driving. A little bit about $100 bills and pizza. Some. Talk about honey. I don't do fast, Sammy. Okay. <laughs> talk about getting wasted. And you know what? I have a different definition than you do. And maybe we'll talk about relay races. You know what? Every every period I've tried to talk about statistics, and I never get that far because I don't have enough group time. I have only one statistic. Here it is. It's number one. If we get there, great. We'll see what happens. Let's start all the way at the top. Life. I told you I was 46. Man, I got a great life. Great wife, <clears throat> great kids, nice house, good job. I love life. Life is great. But you know what? My life has had drugs in it. My life has had death in it. Like every single one of us in this room, you don't go through life untouched, that awful stuff. But you know what? You can get up every day and say, the sun's going to come up. Let's see what I can do positive. And we don't focus on the bad stuff, but we got to learn about it, think about it. Why am I pumped on life right here? One reason. People. I just came back from India. India's a very difficult place to live. When people say, do you like India? I didn't like all the poverty, and I didn't like being worried about what I was going to drink or eat. But you know what I love? Those people in India were incredible. They were so relaxed and so loving. Two years ago, I went to Ireland. People said, how'd you like Ireland? Beautiful, isn't it? Oh, geez, I think I missed that part. It was the people of Ireland that were incredible. They were, they were, they were just beautiful. You know what? I think people all over the place are incredible. Every single one of you is incredible. If I can unzip every head in here and look inside and look at the experiences you had and the emotions, this incredibly unique set of really good stuff. In my job in the last 22 years, I've met over 5,000 students. I've probably met five or six or a thousand teachers. And my life has been increased by that. But you know what happens periodically? One of those people gets wasted. That's a damn shame. And I'm going to talk about getting wasted a little bit later. Um, I'm a right brainer, and I, my, I'm not the greatest with words. One last thing I would like to say before I show you some good pictures, because I love pictures. Friends. For 22 years when I teach sociology, we talk about values, what's important to me. Boom. You guys are constantly saying, my friends, my friends, my friends, my friends. You're constantly saying, I love them, I love them, I love them. You know what, I know that. I've had three teenagers go through my house, my kids, my daughter. I have two easy sons, and I have this daughter. Oh, God. <laughs> For about five years, you know, my wife and I said, what are you doing wrong? But she's 30 now. She's a lovely young woman. And uh, But when she was 15, she came into my bedroom one night at 3 a.m. and said, Dad, I need to go to Liz's house. I looked at the clock radio. It's 3 a.m. And I said, what? I said, wait till morning. She said, no, Liz needs me now. Got out of bed, put my clothes on, drove her over there the whole time I'm grumbling. But when I left, dropped her off, and I left, I'm driving home, and I'm thinking, you know what? God, what are people groceries? Because her friend calls and needs her, and she gets up and responds. You know what? I don't think there's a kid in this room. Not one of you wouldn't do that for your friends. You told me that for 22 years. Now, every once in a while, I question that. Because I see some of your behavior that's not so positive toward your friends, but... But by and large, I think you're great with your friends. Except, don't waste them. 
don't get wasted. Now, I always want to turn the light off and it's up there. I got some great slides. Mr. Hargrave and I collected these slides over the last 100 years or so. Well, he's only been around 10, but I've been around at least 90. And uh, we'll see if we can get the machinery to work here. Ah. I think we're going to roll. OK, slide down line, guess what? Here's where life starts, right in that right there. OK, sort of exciting. Some people get a little confused about it. They can't wonder what's the bump. Okay, but you know what? Daddy and mommy know what's in the bump. Look at that guy's face. So he's laying there asleep, and my son kicks me right through her, her belly there. And I, I woke up and I looked at that belly and said, wait till you come out, young man. And, I know it is. and when they come out, guess what? They are a little bit slangy. They got a string attached. But you know what? They're beautiful. They're really beautiful. And they cry a lot, and they poop a lot at first, but you know what? <laughs> Pretty quick, they get fuzzy, and they smile at you, and they start to make these cool little sounds, and they're just marvelous. And you get to play with them, and you get to act like a kid yourself again, and you get to wonder what they're going to do, where they're going to go. What they're, this is my favorite picture of all 500 pictures. I love this picture the best. In this picture, I see myself looking at my children. I see all the friends that I have that have babies, have children. We all look at those kids and just, we're excited. This is my son, Zach Noack. Yeah, I know, a rough name. How could I say that I get? I don't know, he likes it. He was one day old. I was so excited. Look, it's not blue, it's not pink, it's yellow. He turned out to be a pretty good kid. Zach today is in Hanstadt, Germany, hitchhiking around Europe. I'm scared to death. This is my baby. He's 20, but he's still my baby. This is him when he's about 15. No, no, no. He's <laughs> about three months old, I think. Now, isn't this the greatest picture in the world? My whole life, I've worked construction, besides being a teacher, and one of my friends, Don Horner, teaches physics here. He loves wheeling sand in a wheelbarrow. Makes him feel like this burly man. And he's uh, called the sand man. The first time I saw a picture, I said, hey, baby Don Horner. No question. No question. Now, you can stop about being psyched on life. Look at the kid, two back from the drum major. He's, he's so psyched about being in this marching band off the ground. Watch. Here's a close up. Watch. He's off the ground. That's psyched on life. That's pumped. And look at his face. Like, isn't that marvelous? Okay, here are the six of his bags, car, none of the others. Oh, look at that face. That little kid's so pumped. That's great. Look at that. It really isn't. He's in our cafeteria. Now, when I walk through the lawn periodic, I see kids, kids playing cards. I have a tip. Do not play cards with girls. They cheat. But it's okay, you know what? They play cheat. They're still confused. <laughs> okay. Look at this Look at this picture of her as a kid. Jeez. Okay. This is Mr. Uh, Mr. Shaw when he was younger. I think this is Shaw. Um, no, no, this is Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
for so long, how could they get a great season? They just came from a swim match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, so next week, do it. No planning on it. Our soccer team is great. Here's this Busani brother-in-law, you know. He shows up at all the games and all. <laughs> Instruction out front, okay, who's this? It's like uh, Greg Peterson, okay, can't keep up with that much concrete. Mr. Uh, Seidel, on the left. He's a dog. Here's Doug and Nancy out front. Did you go to Hatch League School? <laughs> Uh, Mr. Dill, when he was younger, he's very shy, very reserved. Now, these are fair work drills. You might say, how do I know? There's no caption. Look at those legs. We gotta be fair work. And these fair work drills, they kiss everywhere. Here's baby high school in the woods. Okay? Here's it. They're in like they're kissing. Okay? Down by the canals, your mom's watching, so be careful. Okay? In the hallways, they're kissing. In the grass, they're kissing. They're kissing everywhere. These fair work <laughs> except he was tough, tough as nails. He was our 98 pounder, he was about 5'10", 5'10", 98 pounds. He was so skinny, you turn sideways, you didn't see him. He was that little, whoop, that little outie belly button sticking out there. <laughs> Nothing else. Well, how many of you are in athletics here? Okay, athletes always have like these little superstitions. They think that if I wear these same socks every game, I'm gonna win. Or if I put my, my little jockey out the same way every time, I'm gonna win. My superstition was right here, magic elixir called honey. If I had money and hot tea on the wrestling team, I was invincible. Well, one Saturday night after the weigh-in, I got my, my honey out, my tea out, and I'm getting ready. And in the locker room walks Johnny. Johnny, Johnny Roberts was this, this little skinny guy, but he was so nasty. He was so tough. Kids in the hallway would, like, get away from him. But he walks in, and he's carrying his bag, and he walks by my stuff, and he knocks the honey off on the floor. And we didn't have carpets. We luckily had floors. And guess what? Hit the concrete. Wow, broke all over the place. Oh my God, this is my magic elixir. How can I win? I went crazy. I went ballistic. I grabbed him and I'm pounding on him and I'm screaming and people had to pull me off. I wanted to wad him up and put him in a locker for two weeks. Now, he was shaking and crying. It was awful scene. But I don't remember anything after that. I don't remember the match at all, which is sort of unusual. I do remember the next Monday morning. I came into the locker room and on the floor was a little bag. And I picked it up and in the bag was a small jar of honey and a note. The baddest kid in our school. 
note saying, Dear Jim, I'm very, very, very sorry I broke your honey. Will you please so Daisy forgive me? Your best friend, Love John. Love John! I'm dying laughing. Here's this bad, bad, bad ass kid. Love John! I laughed so hard. I showed a couple of my friends. We just died laughing. I will never forget John Roberts. Another friend was Mr. Perfect. Bobby Clark. Oh, Bob Clark. He was just, his hair was always perfect. I always had these colics. His hair was perfect. His clothes were perfect. He'd come off a two hour lacrosse workout. He'd walk off of the field. They'd walk out with dry cleaners. He was perfect. He had the perfect girl, the perfect car, perfect. One night he wasn't so perfect. One night we went to a party. Back when I was in high school, kids didn't drink too much. But he and his own kid had been drinking. He's sitting there, he's like sort of weaving. He's like barely conscious, but he's weaving. And it was a rock party. We're just sitting around, he's looking at everybody else. So I said, let's go to Proyetti's. Well, Proyetti's was this pizza place. Did you ever go to Proyetti's? Yes! Okay, now, now it was sort of in a dangerous area because it was right on the, between the city and East Aranequa. And East Aranequa was where some of these wimpy guys, that's us, but we sort of hung out. But <laughs> we were willing to go to this dangerous pizza place because the pizza was so good. Well, we pick Bobby up, put him in the car, we drive up to Proyetti's. Take him out of the car, we bring him in, set him down. They had like long tables like this, a bunch of tables. We sat down, we ordered two pizzas with everything on them. Bobby's sitting there just sort of weaving. 20 minutes later, guess what? Lady comes, puts two pizzas down with everything on them. Bobby opens one eye a little bit, takes a little bit of a whip. <laughs> he puked all over our pizzas. Those pizzas had everything on them. His lunch, his dinner, his everything. No problem. I pick up Bobby, I figure I gotta take him to the ladies' room, clean him up a little bit. Guess what? He's got one left. <laughs> I'm this big guy. <laughs> this big guy stands up and I said, I'm 17, I'm gonna die in Proyetti's, you know. And so, but I ran. I can't Bobby, ran to the ladies' room, I wash his face, I give him a little water, and they sit down, breathe deep. And I look out the door, I all my friends are now dead. And I look and they're all, everybody's laughing. You know, so it's not a big deal, I came out. About 10 minutes later, Bob comes out, feels better. He said, we should order pizza. I said, yeah, with everything on, right, Bob? It's in the mouth. <laughs> At my house, Tuesday is my night to, to, to cook. So Tuesday night, I'm in the pizza place. You can see what I'm going to cook here tonight. And, uh, and I saw, and this new pizza place, I just been here for the first time, and listened to all the stuff to put on top. The bottom, it said, the works. After that, in my mind, it said, Bob Clark. Uh, now, the last thing I have to tell you about is a kid who was infamous. If you ever went to Bishop Crowley High School or East Ridge High School, or you've lived around East Runnicoy, you probably knew one of the Barranco brothers. Now, I grew up with Russell Barranco, the oldest brother. Now, I don't know if any of you have a friend that's so much fun that they're dangerous. You know, like, I mean, you're a little nervous to be around them because they, they have some crazy ideas. That's Russell. Russell was like the kind of kid we had, we had like three foot snow drift once. He said, let's climb up on top of the house and dive in head first, see what happens. You know? Uh, we didn't do it, luckily, we would have broken our necks. But, I do remember one time almost going to Attica because of Russell. <laughs> we were about 12 years old, we were in the pea shooters. They're just like long straws, you know, you wad up some paper in your mouth, and you, you know, you, and you all probably did that. We're 12, we're doing this. So we went downtown. We covered all of downtown rides through the half an inch of pea shooting stuff. You hit the top of the Xerox building? Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, we're hitting everything. We got bored. So we're, on, we're waiting for the bus, waiting to go. It's my car and me and, and Russell. And Russell said, watch this. Steps back away from us, four or five steps. There's two cops over there, two Italian police with these big heavy leather jackets. He pulls out a whole bunch of spit wad stuff. <laughs> Turn the back of this cop. He goes, Oh God, Russell, get out of there. He puts the patient away. He approaches the cop. <laughs> <laughs> boys over there, you can check their pockets. They have spit wads. They just got you on the back. And this cop says, Hey, Frank, I gotta back you out, Louis. Let's get those kids. <laughs> they come over and they're screaming at We're wetting our pants. We're going to Russell's standing like the model citizen, you know? <laughs> See, I want to give Russell one of these kids right in the head. Okay. <coughs> Probably the, the one that I remember. I, if you ever had me for a class, you think it's things that are sort of boring, just say, so I can tell all this story. I could go for hours, but I'll just tell you one more that I sort of like. When we were in our early early 20s, late teens, I'm not sure which, we were construction this summer <clears> in college. And I remember being in the truck, and I'm sitting here, my brother's here, Russell and Mike and Bobby are in the back. And, uh, and after work, we went to this bank, and we got $100 bills. It's a Friday. 
And we thought, oh, we're going to go to this little place where we can eat. We put the $100 bills up on the counter. It'd be so cool. I'll pay. No, I'll pay. We got the $100 bills, right? I mean, we looked like Joe Shit the Rag Man. But, uh, <laughs> my father's lying. Okay. Anyway. So we, we got our $100 bills. I'm driving. I stopped right at Ridge and, and Goodman, right there by Bishop Kearney High School. And uh, we're just sort of waiting there. And Russell jumps out of the truck. Now, I hear the door open. And my brother says, Russell jumped out. I said, Figures. You know, now Russell takes this, he's got his hundred dollars in his hand, he reaches out of this car next to us, and he like goes like this, and he says, A hundred dollars! I found a hundred dollars! And then he runs over like and there's like weeds along this the road there. He's pretending to pick up money and shove it in his in his shirt. Light turns green, I say, Ross, we're leaving. He runs and he jumps back in the truck, and as we're driving away, we look to see what happens. About five cars pulled off. And these people are getting out, they're looking for his money. was one of my students, became one of my friends. He's a great kid, he's in his early 30s, name is Steve Casper. Steve Casper was one of the worst students I ever had, ever. Because he wasn't focused on the academics. Steve Casper was focused on this part of the building down here called the music department. Steve Casper was this incredible drummer. He, he played music, he listened to music down there, he composed music, music was his life. And you know what? Steve Casper got wasted. One night he got wasted. When we used to have homeroom every day, I remember one day, these two girls were leaving my homeroom on a Friday. One said to the other, what are you gonna do this weekend? She said, ah, I'll probably get wasted like always. And I stopped that. I said, wait, come here. I'm gonna tell you my definition of wasted. Steve Cassidy, beside me, focused down there, he was focused into this drug culture. He did a lot of drinks, <coughs> and a lot of pot, and a lot of pills. One night, he and his buddies are coming up Bay Road. Road. They've been, they've, they were all loaded. Steve's in the death seat, which is the passenger seat in the front. The kid's driving. He's loaded. They're going past Clausen's. There's a slow car on the hill. This kid says, ah, I'm going to pass this car on the hill. Double yellow. It's pretty stupid to, to pass on a hill. Coming, coming westbound, they meet a car coming right at the top of this hill. It's Bay Road Hill. Now, luckily, this kid who was loaded did get the car off the road. But he cut that telephone pole at the top of that hill right in half. At the same time, he cut Steve Casper's spinal cord in half, right here. And that is that Steve Casper's life was wasted. Now, on a great day, beautiful sunny day, any time during the year, I'm looking at my lesson, the kids are coming in, and I'm thinking, and that's less than sort of weak. And then I say to somebody, I say, oh, why don't I tell you really racist? And they look at me and say, yeah. So we go out there, we, we run, the guys are all competitive, and the girls are going like this, and they don't sweat. You know? <laughs> and, and then we come back and we turn the lights off and put our feet up on the desk. We turn some music out, we say, ain't life grand. I'm psyched on life, I love life. How many of you in here love to run relay races? Run down a hill, just run. Anybody love to run? Like running. Any of you ski in here? The skiers? Love to just ski down a hill like crazy. Anybody here like to dance? Gucci, Gucci, yeah, okay. You know what? Steve Casper can't dance. He can't run. He can't ski. He got wasted. Steve Casper can't go to the bathroom himself. Steve Casper is confined to a wheelchair the rest of his life. He's got a condom on his penis that gets changed every day by a nurse. It goes from, from the condom to a tube to a bag. And he can't feel or use anything below his chest. And guess what? He was at MCC one day. He told all classy kids this once. I heard him. He's at MCC, you know, going to college, and the condom had fallen off. And he looked down, and he's sitting in a pool of his own urine. How easy is it for Steve Casper to say ain't like grand? If he lives to be 80 for the next 50 years, he'll live just like that. Ain't like grand. Steve's not learning about that stuff this way. He learned the hard way. And I haven't got to my definition of wasted yet. Here it is. Steve Casper cannot hold drumsticks. His life. He had a four-year scholarship to a music school. He should be sitting today recording the greatest music on the planet. 
He would have been doing that. He was so gifted. He can't hold drumsticks. I heard him do a presentation at East Rochester. And at the end of the presentation, this kid came up and looked at him up on the stage and he said, you know, I'm a musician. If you took my, my music away, I would want to die. Do you ever feel like, like suicide? You know, Steve is such a positive kid. He said, ah, nah, there are a lot of things I can do. Then he paused and he said, sometimes when I hear drum music, it's my definition. Don't get wasted. You're young, you're energetic, you're creative, you're caring, you're beautiful. Don't get wasted. Don't waste your friends. I've had students that I think are pretty neat kids, but you know what they did to their friends? They wasted them. Don't waste my kids. Don't you dare get on the highway and drive reckless or drunk. Waste my kids. It doesn't just happen for a second it's gone. It happens and it's the rest of your life. Right okay, now I have a second set of slides that are, that are rotten slides. I just want to run through these rotten slides. <laughs> Only because these slides woke me up a little bit. They used to get by the cars. Who's going to drive you home tonight? Who's going to get there today, Bob? Hey, every one of us that drives statistically will have three accidents in our life. Hopefully they're accidents we just have to buy a new car. This car can be replaced easily. This is a real kid. None of these pictures are, are phony. These are all kids taken by the Monroe County Sheriff. They gave me these pictures and said, show these to as many teenagers you can because we're sick of picking up dead teenagers. The number one way for kids your age to die is right there. In a car accident. And when you die in a car accident, you don't close your eyes, you go to sleep. Your body gets brutally ripped to pieces. You can't go on saying nothing's wrong if that's happening. Who's going to drive you home tonight? Motorcycles are dangerous. It's a kid from the first set of slides. Now he's in the second set of slides. His ankle bone, they removed the boot. Oh my God. Ankle. You know, I said how people are caring and creative and cool and all this great stuff. You know what people aren't? We aren't tough. We are fragile. We rip and tear and break very easily. These medical examiners pick up these bodies, bring them back to their office, and they measure them and weigh them, and they fingerprint them, and they put them on a stainless steel tray in one of these coolers. You know what? That picture I said I love? I've had four babies, and I never ever one time thought that one of my babies would end up on a tray in one of those coolers. I know parents from this community that have gone to see their kid on one of those trays. Wasted. Don't do that. Don't do it to yourself. Don't do it to somebody else. You know, these people do something called an autopsy where they take their body apart to determine exactly why you died. And you are reduced to paperwork and a lot of tears and a headstone. I'm just going to take you home tonight. Now, some of you in this room might, might be saying right now, yes, I know, this is real, i got to be careful. Maybe some of you aren't convinced. My three friends, Johnny, the wrestler, dead. Run over by a car, he was drunk. Ran right over. Russell, crazy Russell, somebody that I've never in my life seen anybody so full of life, is dead. Sitting, sitting waiting for a red light. Broadsided by a drunk. He left a wife and a six-month-old child. Bobby Clark, nothing to do with cars. Bobby Clark did a lot of LSD. Got off it, got rehabilitated, dropped out of college. He had a flashback. Jumped out of bed one night, put a knife right in his heart. I had a kid three years ago. He came to see me three weeks ago. He said, Mr. Noy, he said, I heard you tell that story about Bobby Clark and the LSD. He said, 
I did LSD last week and I almost killed myself. I'm scared of death. Tell your, tell your students, LSD is not some fun, cool thing. It's a dangerous, stupid drug. And so is alcohol. If you're doing a lot of drinking lately, if your friends are doing a lot of drinking, you have no idea how dangerous that is. But you know what? It makes the second set of slides for me. I don't need any more of those slides. You know what I want? I want 500 more slides of you guys at the parades, playing cards, in the marching bands. I can't create that. You have to do that. If it, during this time you have learned something, that means that you say, I've either changed my behavior or I'm going to walk out here and I, I've got this, this idea that's potentially going to change my behavior. What's the change? Be absolutely sure, certain that whoever is driving the car has not been drinking. Better yet, live a healthy lifestyle. <clears throat> LSD and pot and alcohol, it's a lot of crap. You don't need it. You can be fulfilled and happy and positive without that stuff. I was going to show you my, my sledgehammer demonstration, but I got a little wild last year. I broke my sledgehammer. <laughs> this is 16 pounds. 16 pounds of steel, just 16 pounds. When you drive a car, that's two or 3,000 pounds. If you got hit real hard in the head with this 16 pounds, you die. When you get hit with 2,000 pounds, you get ripped to pieces. I've had recent students rip to pieces. I don't want to happen to you. I'm just going to say one name to you. Meg Marcus. I don't know a lot of details. Wait a minute. I don't know a lot of details, but I do know one thing. The power of an automobile shattered that girl's life forever. Shattered her family's life forever. Learn something today. Be careful. Thank you very much.